just want to show you this new thing. Okay, so um, every day for the next 10 days, um, I'm posting a quick write. Um, it'll pop up in the every morning. They should take you five to 10 minutes max. So you can see all the ones that are going to happen. There's mm -hmm. one up today. You just click on the Google form, respond, submit. Wait, wait, wait. You said every day for the next 10. What does that mean? Even on Sunday? Oh, uh, not the next 10 school days. So like today. Is there only 10 days anyway? There's like 13. Good places you would like to travel. Oh, this going to be easy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm just going to put Wakanda. Oh, my gosh. What's <laughs> real, you know, real, bro? I did not specify if it needed to be a real place, so. You want chicken at least? Um, my future mansion. Yeah, so you just have to respond to that. So there's going to be a question, a little quick right every day, kind of like we did with journal time. Um, it'll pop up every morning. So just hop on each school day and respond to that. Um, open there's only going to be 10 of them. So. When is the last day of school? The, you know what? Like, is the week of Memorial Day, is that the last week of school or is it the week before that? No, it's the week of Memorial Day because normally we'd have like the picnic and field day and graduate or promotion. Mm -hmm. uh, no, that was so the last day of school is May 28th. So I know for me, um, we will have one one time that week and that's it. And we'll just kind of do some kind of Okay, um, also, if you haven't done this Naviant stuff for Madame Ortega, you should look at that. She sent you another message. So take a look at that, and you have two eye readies this week. Um, you'll have these two, and then two more next week, and then no more eye ready. Come on, after this, you just add them. So, oops, I don't know what just happened. Did, did, did you just add the two iReadies? Marshawn told me to ask you that. Yeah, there's just two. Uh, yeah, so said, okay. Uh, okay. Okay. Cool. So, did, this, did we ever figure out what Hippolyta thinks about love? Um, I don't think so. Oh, I know everything of owners thing. I promise you. That's what we do. We do this at my home. I bet. Do my work there. Alright. Oh, okay. Thanks, Bailey. That sucks. Tell her we're thinking about her, okay? Well, what happened? Oh, wait. Never mind. Just ask Bailey later. Okay. Um, okay. So Hippolyta, um, what is her current situation? She got beaten by the doofus. No, not the doofus. The duke. Yeah. And he's kind of like forcefully marrying her, but yeah, she actually is not. She's agreeing with it. So she's kind of doesn't care about love. She's just like, it's whatever. Yeah, love can come from anyway. I don't know. Okay. Do you think she loves the Duke? Has she kind of given any indica indication that she loves him? She was like telling him like the days will come by really quick, my dear, some, some, some. Okay, but does that make you think she loves him? I don't know. Don't care. Fair. Um, anybody, does anybody think Hippolyta actually loves Theseus? I do not. Okay, so. I don't play mobile games. I'm not a kid. <laughs> 
Did you not hear what I said? Okay, so this is what I put. She doesn't love Theseus, but since she was conquered, she has to marry him, and she's okay with it. Um, I mean, so I guess for her actions, she just she's accepting her fate and marrying him willingly like she's not putting up a fight some people would put up a fight like Hermia is putting up a fight um but Hippolyta is just like okay whatever we can get married okay so what I want to talk about here is like what lessons can be learned from this um and like what thematic statements we can get. So if we pick a couple of the easy ones, um, like Helena, what would you say, there's like a common phrase about love that I think we could use for Helena. Because she clearly, she clearly should not be in love with Demetrius. He does not like her. She needs to just let it go. But she yeah. can't. She can't. She doesn't see that he hates. Like she, she knows she he hates her, but she's like, I don't care. I don't care. I love him. I don't care. Nothing matters. I don't care. So is there a phrase out there in the world that kind of describes that type of behavior? Obsessed. Okay, maybe. But loving somebody you shouldn't love, what is the phrase that goes with that? Um, crazy from Cocoa Puffs. Incest. Crazy. Uh, what? Uh, that's yeah. what she said. That is okay. incest. I said it's like an idiom. It's a thing everybody says. My Sean. It's raining cats and dogs. <laughs> you wish it, bro. I don't oh. think that's it. An <laughs> apple day keeps the doctor. What? A tooth fairy keeps the boot fairy. Do you know the idiom you're talking about? Wait, can you yeah. just say hello? Blind. Love is blind. Yep. Oh yeah, I got it before she typed blind. Boy, uh, she already wrote it down. Uh, no, I said love, I said love is and I was like blind. Love is blind. Uh, is that um yeah, so if we go with that idea. What other things are we seeing? Like what do Hermia and Lysander try to do? Uh, so with this love is blind idea, what else is it? It causes what sort of things? Like if you look at um, Helena and you look at Oberon and Tanya and Hermia and Lysander, right. what are they causing? Confusion trouble. and pain. Confusion, yeah. pain, trouble. Can I sum all those up with like chaos? Mm hmm. Okay. Um, let, going back to Helena, do you think she's being intelligent about her choice? Or <laughs> Mia, is she being intelligent? Like, I'm just gonna give up my whole family, my friends, my life, and run away with this guy. Like, nice. I'm sacrificing everything for this one person, hoping this one person will fulfill me. Do you think that's a smart choice? Uh, Hermia made a smart choice, but if it wasn't for Oberon, they would have been all fine. Okay, but. Do you think it was 
Oops. Do you think her giving up her entire family for one person and like her whole life, like she can never go back? Do you think that was, you think that was a wise choice on her part to just be like, yeah, this guy will make me happy. So forget all of you. Uh, love makes you do crazy things. Kind of Margaret, you understand that. Eh? <laughs> I mean, would you have given up everything if your family was like, nope, we're not going with you? You'll still ma have married Ryan, right? I wow, mean, that's a hard question. Mm -hmm. and, uh, you getting popped. <laughs> um, I don't know. I think I would have needed... I would say that when I was younger and more naive, I probably would have done something like that. But now that I'm older and less naive, if my family didn't be someone for some reason, that would give me a lot of pause. Like I would, because my family is pretty logical, but I don't know. That would be hard. Because I would be the 17. I'm also like, really close with my family. It's like, I should be because I'm 17. I won't be a million there. Shut up. However, I would at this point choose Maddox over anyone. Yeah. Like Good it choice. Maddox or anybody, it would be Maddox. Um, but it's different. Like, I would choose him over Ryan if I had to. Um, and I think Ryan would do the same. So it causes you to do crazy things, make silly decisions. It's chaotic. Um, Helena like runs off into the night, which is super weird. Um, she's, I would also say she's desperate. Um, and so is Hermia, and so is Lysander. So, like, they're making these really stupid decisions because they're desperate for this other person. Um, which to me is like so pure love. Like, I don't know if anybody in here. Um, is showing true love, pure love, because. Why is Lysander like, give up your whole life for me? And why is she willing to do that? Yeah, why is her father like, not letting her marry who she wants? He's good for her. Why is Theseus just conquered this woman? He's like, okay, now you're my wife. Say that out loud. That sounds weird. Yeah, so like, and Oberon and Titania are running around on each other all the time and fighting, causing all the climate and stuff to go haywire. So it's just, nobody in this story, I think, really shows the example of like true love. So this desperate, crazy, overwhelming love with it just makes you do illogical things. Wasn't that? What's true love? Um, that's a good question. Um, do you think so? Based on that, I think one of the things that this is telling us is that love is powerful and hey, cannot be controlled. Laugh now, see? Because you can't. What it's showing us is that you can't be told who to love and who not to love. So, like Helena keeps being told, don't love Demetrius, don't love me, I don't love you. She's like, I don't care. And then Aegeus is like, love Demetrius for me. And she's like, no, I don't want you. That's him. And even Theseus and Hippolyta, they're choosing to get married to each other out of like duty. But they're both kind of like, you're fine. No, I know how to make them, but I don't know how to make them in life. We'll be making spaghetti tomorrow. Does that make sense? Yes, it makes perfect sense. Yeah. Um, cool. Okay, so we'll probably come back and visit this at some point. But right now, this is kind of where we're at in the...
craziness of this play. So we're going to um, read Act 3 and hoping we get through it, but we might not. Um, we actually can because we don't have no class after this, so yes. Nice. This class ends at three, right? Yeah. It so doesn't um, have to. So we're looking today at how the drama starts to unfold in this plot um, in a series of episodes, as well as how the characters respond to change and how the plot starts to move forward towards a resolution. So in a play, in a five-act play, act one is like the exposition. And it sets up the climax or the conflict and all that. Act two and part of act three are the rising action. And then you have the climax typically in act three. Act four is usually the falling action and five is the resolution. So if we're in act three, we're starting to get to like the really meaty part of this play. Okay, so I need all of you to somebody. So Titania's sleeping. We'll come back to her later. I'll be bottom if you want, because he probably has the most line. So if you guys don't want to do that, I'll do him. But I need a quince, a flute. A snug, a snout, and a starveling. So basically all of us. Right. So who's Quince? Who has the least lines? I don't know. Who has the second most lines? Since I you're don't know. <laughs> That's hard. Okay, Bailey, you're Quince. Brian, you're I'm Flute. Say, okay. I'm what? You're Quince. Okay. Brian's flute. Marshawn, you're snug. Aaron, Can I be bar- now. Okay. And Baraka, you're starveling. Christina, did you want some? I'll have you to Tanya, I think, when she comes up, okay? Okay. Are we all here? Yeah. Yes. No. Y'all, that's my line. Oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> so while Titania is asleep on stage, the clowns, bottom quince, flute, snug snout, and startling enter. Are we all here? Right on time. This is perfect place to rehearse. This clearing will be on stage in the har- hawthorn hawthorn bush will be dressing will be our dressing room. Let's put our play exactly as the perform it for the Duke. Peter Quince? So you mix it up. Well, that's jo- Jolly Bottom. What is it? What is it, Jolly Bottom? There are things in this comedy of Pyramus and Thisbe that will never work. First of all, Pyramus has to take out a sword to kill himself, which the ladies in the audience won't be able to stand. What should we do about that? By God, that's a real problem. It's true. Ariel, no, Baraka, you're starveling. I think we'll have to leave. Oh, wait, I think we have to leave out all, all the killing. Come to think. Not at all. I've got a plan that will fix everything. Yeah. Write me a prologue that I can recite to the audience before the play starts. I'll tell them that we won't hurt anyone with our swords, that Pyramus isn't really dead. And to make it clearer, we can tell them that I'm playing Pyramus, but I'm not really Pyramus, really. I'm Bada, the weaver. That'll keep them from being afraid. So I like how they think that people, that like, the ladies are so dumb that they're not going to understand that this is a performance. All right, we'll have a prologue then. We'll write it in an altering eight and six syllable lines, just like the Baldwin. A ballad, which is a song. Ballad. No, add a couple more syllables. Make it eight and eight. Now, won't the ladies be scared of the line? I'm really worried about that. 
sirs, you ought to think of yourself bringing in, God forbid, a lion amongst the ladies is really terrible. There's no scarier wild bird than the living lion, and we should remember that. What? So we need another prologue to tell us everyone he is not a real lion. No, we can just announce the actor's name and let his face show through the lion costume and have him say something himself. He should say the following or something else to the same defect. Ladies or lovely ladies, I would like to ask you or I'd like to request of you or I'd like to beg you not to be afraid and not to tremble with fear. I value your lives as highly as my own. If you thought I was a real lion, I would be risking my life. But no, I am not at all a lion. I am a man just like other men. And then he should say his name and tell them plainly he snug the carpenter. All right, that's what we'll do then. But there's, there are two things we still have to figure out. How are we going to bring Moonlight into a room? Because, you know, Pyramus and Thebes Th- 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 might be Moonlight. Met by Moonlight. Met by Moonlight. Now... Where the moon is shining on at night, we're performing our play. We need a calendar. Look in the almanac. Look up moonshine. Look up moonshine. Yes, the moon will shine that night. Well, then you can leave one of the windows open in the big hall where we'll be performing, and the moon can shine in through the window. Yes, or else someone will have to come in carrying a bundle of sticks and a lantern and and say he's coming to disfigure or represent the character of moonshine because the man in the moon is supposed to carry sticks, a lantern, and a lantern. But there's still another problem. We need to have a wall in the big hall because according to the story, Permanus and Thisbe walk through a wall, hole in the wall. Talked through a little hole in the wall. Talked through a hole in the wall. You'll never be able to bring in a wall. What do you think, Bottom? Someone should play the part of wall. He can have some plaster or clay or limestone or something on him to show the audience that he is a wall. He can hold his fingers in a V shape like this, and Pyramus and Thisbe can whisper each other through that little crack. If we can do that, everything will be all right. Now sit down, everybody, and rehearse your parts. Pyramus, you'll start. When, we, when you have your, said your lines, go hide in the, that bush. Everyone else, go there to when you're not out on stage. Robin enters, unseen by the characters on stage. Um, Ariel, you don't have a lot of lines. You be Robin. Okay. Okay, now I can. Who, is, oh, who are these country bumpkins swaggering around so close? So close to where the fairy queen is sleeping, what are they about? Wait, are they about to put on a play? I'll watch and I'll act in it too if I feel like it. Speak, Primness. Thisbe, come forward. Thisbe, flowers with sweet, odious smells. Odious means disgusting, so he's making a mistake. Adores, adores. Odors. Odors, odors. Odors and smell, smells are like your breath, my dearest Thisbe dear. But what's that? A voice. Wait here a while. I'll be right back. <laughs> Bottom exits. Robin. Here we go. Oh, my bad, my bad. That's the strongest pyramid. Strangest. Oh, strangest premise I've ever seen. Luke. Uh, I'm supposed to talk now? Yes, you are. You're supposed to show that you understand that Primness just went to check on the on a noise he heard and is coming right back. So flute as Thisbe, you need to, uh, you need to have a high gravity voice. Most radiant, premius. Most radiant. You are. Let us. Most radiant. Am I supposed to read now? 
Yes, but you're supposed to have a squeaky, curly voice. Yeah, I don't know how I'm going to do it. Okay. I can't do it. All right. Continue. You can do okay. it. Hey, you are as white as a lily. And the color of a red rose on a splendid rose bush. Mm -hmm. A very lily. Lively young man and also a lovely jewel. You are as reliable mm -hmm. as a horse that never gets tired. I'll meet you, Pyramus, at Nini's grave. Yeah. That's Nini's Ninus grave, man. And don't say all of that all of that yet. You're supposed to say some of it as a reply to Primus. Pyramus. You, Pyramus, you just said all of your lines at once. Cues all, and all. Pyramus enters. You missed your cue. It's never get, it's never gets tired. Oh, as reliable as a horse that oh. never gets tired. Robin enters with bottom with a donkey's head instead of a human head. So this is telling us, these are like the cues in the stage directions that off stage, while they couldn't see Robin play a trick on bottom and gave him the head of a donkey. Can you picture that? A little. If I were handsome, my lesbi lovely thisby, I would still only want you, or want only you. Help! Me. Help! It's a monster. We're being haunted. Run, every everyone, run. Huh? I like that you said. Uh, Quince, flute, snug, and snout, and starveling exit. Robin. Oh, you want me to say? Let me all come for you. Yeah, maybe you said you were sent today, so I don't really care. Ariel. Oh my gosh, that's a lot. I'll follow you. I'll run you around in circles through back. Wait, did I say bad balls? Bog, bog. bog bushes and woods and thorns. Sometimes I'll take the shape of a horse. Sometimes I'll take the shape of a hound or a pig or a headless bear. Sometimes I'll turn into fire and I'll neigh like a horse and bark like a hound and grunt like a pig and roar like a bear and burn like a fire yeah. at every time. So basically, Robin's going to follow these guys around the woods scaring the nonsense out of them. Okay, Robin exit. Why are they running away? This is some joke of theirs to scare me. Snout enters. Snout. Marshawn. Marshawn. Marshawn, your snout. Oh, bottom, you changed. What have you got on your head? What do you, what do you think head? I've got on my head? You're acting like an ass, don't you think? Snout egg. Quince answers. God bless you, bottom. God bless you. You've been changed, reborn. Quince well, exit. I see I like what they're up to. They'll want to make an ass of me to scare me if they can. I won't leave this spot no matter what they do. I'll walk up and down and sing a song so they'll know I'm not afraid. Okay. The blackbird with its black feathers and its orange and tan beak. The thrush with its clear voice. The wren with its small piping chirp. Titania waking up. Ariel, um, let's see, who can be Titania? That, that was probably. Oh, wait. Yeah, you want to be Titania? <laughs> okay. What angel is that? Is this who's waking me, me up from my bed of flowers? The finch, the sparrow, and the lark. The gray cuckoo with his simple song. The many men hear, but they don't dare say no to it. So remember when she wakes up, the first thing she sees, she's going to say what? Me in love with you. Exactly. <laughs> if they don't say no, who'd waste his time talking to such a stupid bird? Who'd bother to accuse a bird of lying, even if the bird were telling him that his wife was cheating on him? I have a gift. Please sign again. Uh, please sign again, sweet human. I love to listen to your voice, and I love 
to look at your body. I know this is the first time I've ever seen you, but you're so wonderful that I can help swearing to you that. Yeah. I don't think you've got much of a reason to love me, but to tell you the truth, reason and love have very little to do with each other these days. It's too bad. <laughs> it's too bad some mutual friend of theirs doesn't introduce him. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. You're as wise as you are. Dad. No, that's not true. But if I were smart enough to get out of this forest, I'd be wise enough to satisfy myself. Don't bother wishing you could leave this forest because you're going to stay here either you want to or not. I'm I'm no ordinary I'm no ordinary fairy. I rule over this summer and I love you. So come with me. I'll give you fairy fairies as servants and they'll bring you jewels from the depths of the ocean and sing to you while you sleep on a bed of flowers and I'll turn you into a spirit like us so you won't die as humans do. Come here. Peas, blossom, Peas, cobweb, peas. moss, and mustard seed. I wish that was me. I don't want to die. So the fairies come. Ready? Me too. Me too. And me. Where should we go? Um, and then I'm going to just fast forward. Basically, she's like, give him whatever he wants. Hello, hello, hello. I beg your pardon. Tell me your name. Um, I'd like to get you to know about blah, blah, blah. He's just talking to all of them and being weird. Take good care of him. Um, yeah. That's it. Okay, Oberon comes in. Uh, Marshawn, is he back? What's he doing? I can't read it. Okay, you want to be Oberon? Yeah, okay. Cool. I wonder if Titania's awake yet. And if she is, I wonder what the first thing she saw was. Whether it is, she must be completely in love with with it now. Robin okay. enters. You keep going. Oh, me? Mm -hmm. Uh, here. Here, come on, messenger. What's going on? You crazy spirit. Look at what huck, havoc. Huck, havoc have you wrecked in this part of the forest? Ariel. Oh, sorry, my brother was talking to me real quick. Uh, okay. My mistress, Titania, is in love with the monster. While she, is, while she was sleeping in her bed of flowers, a group of bumbling idiots rough to rehearse some Rough play. women from Athens. Oh, I just skipped a whole line. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Athens got together nearby to rehearse some play they planned to perform on Theseus' wedding day. The stupidest one who played Pyramus in their play finished his scene and went to sit in the bushes to wait for his next clue. Coo you. Coo you. I took the opportunity to stick a donkey's head on him. When it was time for him to go back on stage and talk to his this be. He came out of the bushes, and everyone saw him. His friends run away as fast as ducks scatter when they hear a hunter's gunshot. One of them was so frightened when he heard my footsteps that he yelled, murderer, and called for help from Athens. 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 They were all so afraid that they completely lost their common sense. They started to become scared of... Inanimate. 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 Inanimate object terrified by the thorns. Inanimate. Or something like, I, don't, I don't know. Objects terrified by the thorns and briars that catch at their clothing and pull off their sleeves and hats. 
I led them on in this frightened, distracted state and left sweet. There's more. Okay. Pyramus there transformed into someone with the donkey's head. At that exact moment, T Tanya woke up and immediately fell in love with him and Donkey. <laughs> Oberon. This is going even better than I planned, but have you put the love juice from the flower on the eyes of that Athenian as I asked you to do? Ariel. Okay. Yes, I found him when he was asleep, so that's taken care of too. And the Athenian woman was sleeping near him. When he woke up, he must have seen her. Demetrius and Hermia enter. Step aside. Here's the Athenian coming now. Continue. Uh, that's definitely the woman I saw, but it's not the same man. Marshawn, you're Demetrius. Okay. No, what are we going to do? Let's go. I'm going to <laughs> Why are you so rude to someone who loves you so much? Say the kind of harsh language for the worst enemy. Um, I need a Hermia. This show is getting overwhelming. Hey, I'm like, What? I said this thing is getting overwhelming. Do you want me to pause for a second and we can recap? Yes. No. Yes. I, I want you to pause it and then delete it, throw it in the trash, and never let us read it. Yeah. Oh, okay, that's just not happening. Um, <laughs> so the the guys, the five guys, were rehearsing their play in the forest, and Bottom was being ridiculous as always, and so Puck played a joke on him and gave him the head of a donkey. Everyone ran away scared. Titania woke up, fell in love with him, and Puck thinks that's really funny. Um, and then Puck and Oberon are talking and Oberon's like, Hey, did you put the juice on that Athenian guy's eye? He's like, yeah, I totally did. It's all taken care of. And then Hermia and Demetrius enter. Remember Hermia is the daughter of Aegeus. She's in love with Lysander. They're running away together. Um, and Demetrius is the one her dad wants her to marry. Um, Puck was supposed to put the juice on Demetrius's eyes, but he put it on Lysander's. So now wow. Hermia and, Lys and Demetrius are coming in, and Demetrius still loves Hermia. So I guess I'll be Hermia. I'm only scolding you now, but should treat you much worse because I'm afraid you've given me good reason to curse you. If you've killed Lysander while he was sleeping, then you're already up to your ankles in blood. You might as well just jump right into a bloodbath and kill me too. He was more faithful to me than the sun is to the daytime. Would he have snuck away from me while I was asleep? I'll believe that there is, I'll believe that when I believe there is a hole through the center of the earth and the moon has passed all the way through to the other side. The only possibility is that you'd murder him. A murderer should look like you do, so pale and grim. Demetrius. Demetrius. Rashawn, where did you go? I went to the moon. That's how someone. What? Bro, you're right here. You're on mute. You're muted, buddy. You're muted. Nobody can hear you. Oh, God. That's how someone who's been murdered should look, and that's how I look. You push me through the heart with your cr cr cruelty, cruelty, and yet you Yo. made it look as bright and clear as a star in the sky. Yo, what's up? Here? What does that have to do with Ly my Lysander? Where is he? Oh, good, Demetrius. Will you find him for me? Oh, I, rather, I would rather see his foot to my dogs. Yikes. Get out, dog. You've driven me to my wit's end. Did you kill him then? From now on, I won't even consider you a human being. 
Oh, just tell me the truth for once. Tell the truth, if only for my sake. Would you have even dared to look at him when he was awake? And did you kill him while he was sleeping? Oh, how brave of you. A snake could do that as easily as you could. A snake did do it because no snake has ever, no snake ever had a more forked lying tongue than you have. You're getting all one uh, over. Oh, a misunderstanding. I don't. I didn't kill Lysander as far as I know. He's not even dead. Then please tell me he's all right. If I told you, if I told you that, what would, what would I get out of it? The privilege of never seeing me again. And now I'm going to leave your despised company. You'll never see me again, whether or not he's dead. Uh, Armia exit. Demetria. I can't go after her when she is in rage like this. Don't so I'll stay here for a while. Time to get when you haven't had enough sleep. I'll try to sleep a little here. Demetria lie down and fall asleep. Nigga, get in a shower. Okay, over on. What have you done? You've made a mistake and put the love juice on someone else. Someone who was truly in love. Because of your mistake, someone's true love must have turned bad. Instead of this man, this man's false love being turned into a true love. Robin. Um, in that case, it must be fate. That's the way of the world. For every man who's faithful to his true love, a million end up running after a different lover. Go around the forest, moving faster than the wind, and make sure you find Helena of Athens. She's lovesick, and her face is pale from all the sighing she's been doing, because sighing is bad for the blood. Ring her here with some trick or illusion, and I'll put the charm on his eyes for when she comes. Oh, okay. I go, I go, look at me go. Faster than an arrow, a tartar's, tartar. Whatever bow. Cool. Wait, I'm not over on. Brian's over on. No, no, you were there, over on. No, you're over on. I know, I know. Um, your purple flower hit my cupid arrows, sink into the pupils, pupils of this man's eyes. When he sees the girl he should love. Make her seem as bright to him as the evening star. Young man, when you wake up, if she's near, nearby, beg her to cure your love sickness. Yeah. Robin. Oh, oh. Helena is nearby, boss. The young man who I mistook for this one is there too, begging her to love him. Should we watch this ridiculous scene? Lord, what fools these mortals are. Step aside. The noise they make will wake up Demetrius. Um, then the two of them will both pursue one girl. That will be funny enough. And preposterous situations are my favorite. Preposterous, ridiculous. So I think what's funny is that Lysander and Demetrius were both competing for Hel for Hermia, and now they're both going to be competing for Helena. Lysander and Helena entered. Um, uh, Baraka, can you be Lysander? And Bailey, can you be Helena? Yeah. Why do you think I'm making fun of you when I tell you I love you? People don't cry when they're mocking someone. Lysander, this is still you. Baraka at the top. Baraka. Look when I swear. <laughs> Look when I swear that I love you, I cry. And when someone cries, wow. Well, He's making a promise. He's usually telling the truth. How can I seem like I'm making fun of you when my tears prove that I'm whatever that says? Sincere. You get trickier and trickier. You've made the same promise to me and Hermia. They both, they can't both be true. They must both be false. 
The promises you're making to me belong to Hermia. Will you abandon her if you wait? Waited, weighed the promises you make to me against the promises you made to her. They come out the same. They both weigh nothing. Nothing. They're lies. I wasn't thinking clearly when I made those promises. But... I don't, and I don't believe you're thinking clearly now as you break those promises. Demetrius loves her, and he doesn't love you. Laying your row up, beat your ass, then you suck. You try, oh. but... <laughs> bro. Okay, we bro. are in class. Okay. Tell him to have his go <laughs> oh, else and have that language. <laughs> hey, that mouse. Demetrius, you're waking up. <laughs> All right, man. Waking up. Oh hell no. You <laughs> you got it. You are divine, perfect. Man, no, bro, like, they looking like a bear. Yeah, hey, little brother. <laughs> Your eyes do. Crystal isn't clear. Crystal isn't as clear as they are. Oh, your lips are so... No, I'm skipping that. Uh, <laughs> I'm thinking you do something. You're really yeah, pretty and perfect. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that the shit. <laughs> oh, let me kiss your beautiful white hand. It'll make me so happy. Okay. <laughs> Helena. Dang it. I see you're all determined to gang, to gang up on me for a few laughs. If you had any manners at all, you wouldn't treat me like this. Can't you just hate me as I know you do? Do you have to get together to eliminate me too? If you were real men, as you pretend to be, you wouldn't treat a lady this way. Making vows and promises and praising my beauty when I know you're really both disgusting by me. disgusted by me. You're competing for hey. Hermia's love. And now you're competing to see which one of you can make fun of me the most. That's a great idea, a really manly thing to do. Making a poor girl cry. No respectful, respectable person would offend an innocent girl just to have some fun. Don't be cruel, Demetrius. I know you love her, Mia, yeah, and, you don't know, and you know it. I know it. Right here, right now, I swear I'm giving up all my claims on her and handing her to you. In exchange, give up your claim to love Helena since I love her and will love her until I die. Nobody's ever gonna I'm done. Gone, gone to so much trouble just to make fun of someone. Like Sandy, keep your home here. I don't want her. I don't want her if I ever love her. All that love is gone now. My love for her was temporary. <laughs> Now I love Helena forever. I'm a stab dress. Hi, Sander. It's not funny, dude. Everything's funny. <coughs> Baraka, are you still there? I make money off of doing this. <coughs> Hold up. Helena, <coughs> no, it's not true. <laughs> Don't you saw deep love that? You don't understand all your pay, Pice. Look, here comes the woman you love. Hermia enters. Am I Hermia? Okay. Yes. I think so. It's hard to see clearly in the dark of night, but it's easier to hear well. I couldn't see you, Lysander, but I heard your voice, and that's how I found you. Why did you leave me alone so unkindly? Okay, I'll be back. Baraka. I say when love tells you to go. But what could make but what love could make my Lysander leave me? I had to hurry to my love. You fell on who lights up the night better than all those fairy stars. Why are you looking for me? Didn't you figure out that I left because yeah. I hate you? 
You can't mean what you're saying. It's impossible. So she's in this too. Now I see that all three of them have gotten together to play this cool trick on me. Hurtful, Hermia, you ungrateful girl. Have you conspired with these two to provoke me with this horrible teasing? Have you forgotten all the talks we've had together? The vows that we've made like sisters to one another? All the hours we spent together wishing that we never had to say goodbye? Have you forgotten? Our friendship in our school days, our childhood innocent. We used to sit together and sew one flower to our new two needles, sewing it on one piece of cloth, sitting on the same cushion, singing one song in the same key, as if our hands, our sides, our voices, and our minds were stuck together. We grew together like twin cherries which seemed to be separated, separate, but were also together, two lovely cherries on one stem. We seemed to have two separate bodies, but we had one heart. Did you want to destroy our old friendship by joining these men to insult our, your poor friend? It's not friendly and it's not ladylike. All women would have would be angry with you for doing it, even though I'm the only one who, who's hurt by it. I'm completely dumbfounded by what you're saying. I'm not insulting you. It sounds more like you're insulting me. Come on, confess. Didn't you send Lysander as an insult to follow me around, praising my eyes and my face? Haven't you made your love to Demetrius, who kicked me with his foot not long ago? Come, call me goddess and divine rare species precious heaven heavenly creature why does he talk like that to a girl he can't stand and why does lysander deny that he loves you and he loves you so deeply why would he he show me any affection unless you told him to why does it matter that i'm not as lucky or lovable as you and you that you that the love is feel is unrequited quite quilted unrequited like unrequited. not returned you should pity me for that reason not to hate me i don't know what you're talking about okay fine all right go ahead keep up your little game pretend to be sympathetic but then nudge each other and the wink to and make faces at me when I turn my back keep up your wonderful game you're you're doing such a good job on this trick someone should write a book about it wow <laughs> Helena is hurt foodie first time in foodie back you if you had any sense of pity or manners, you wouldn't pretend to fight over me. <laughs> but goodbye. It's partly my own fault since I followed you here. Leaving or dying will soon take care of everything. Marshawn. So loud. Like that wasn't me. Stay lovely. I don't know. Listen to my excuse. My love and my life are so much beautiful. It's that's a good one. Don't insult her like that, Lysander, darling. Demetrius. Do I have to leave? Yes. The class is over. We're almost done. Oh, I Hold on. <laughs> Holy cow. Okay, we'll just pause. <laughs> wow. More pages. Okay, so basically what's happening right now is Demetrius and Lysander are now fighting for Helena. Helena thinks it's all a big joke. Hermia doesn't really know what's going on. Um, and now Helena's like, how could you do this to me? We used to be friends. And she's like, what the heck are you talking about, Lysander? What's going on? He's like, I don't like you. <laughs> so that's that. Okay, so do you guys have um, quick writes to complete? And I ready. And that's it. Okay. And I'll see you okay. Wednesday. Okay. Okay, bye. Bye, guys. Okay, au revoir.
Wait, what? Okay, um, yeah, I'll see you later. Bye.